Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today's video, uh, we're continuing on with the GSXR 750 project bike, Suzuki. Uh, this one's got a thousand engine in it. It's a 2001. Um, this procedure will apply to 01s, 02s, and I believe 03s. I think 2004 and beyond, they changed the rear caliper uh, setup for these bikes. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, yeah, today we're just going to be changing the pads all around on this um, Suzuki. Uh, the front pads and caliper setup are really straightforward. It's dual discs in the front. Pretty similar to what you've seen. The pads in the rear actually are a little bit different. Um, a little trickier, there's some kind of keeper pins you got to keep an eye out for and make sure you, you put it back together correctly. Um, overall though, it's a, it's a really easy procedure. Anybody can do it. Um, just off the top of my head, I'll try and remember the tools. I just did it last week, but um, you're gonna need Allen keys. You need a five millimeter uh, for the slide pins, and you're gonna need a three millimeter for the fronts to get the uh, the back plate off, and then it's a 12 millimeter for the caliper bolts that actually hold the caliper onto uh, the front forks and onto the uh, rear swing arm, and then there's another bolt, 14 millimeters. It's on the rear end. And unfortunately for me, like it was, I don't know if it's ever been taken out or not, but I essentially needed a breaker bar on the on the left side and a socket on the right side, and then just broke torque with it that way because it was like it was really tough to get out. Um, other than that, you need a couple of different sizes of screwdrivers. I get like a medium sized screwdriver, and then try and find yourself like a small screwdriver so that you can poke these little pins in for the uh, the rear pads. They're a little bit tricky, but I'll show you in the video. Um, other than that, I had a you know brake parts cleaner, spray the calipers down and the uh, rotors and all that stuff, get everything nice and clean. Um, doesn't really apply so much to bikes as it does like drum brakes on a car, but uh, there's still brake dust in there. You just want to get rid of it. It's a it's a good habit. Um, and then lastly, you just need some grease. Um, I'm using this crazy grease stuff here. I got it up in Princess Auto. <laughs> up here in Canada, but you can use whatever you want. This is multi-purpose uh, grease. It is for auto uh, application, so I use it to uh, lubricate the slide pins and I put some on the back plates for the pads um, where the piston's gonna be uh, uh, sliding into. So, yeah, other than that, you need your pads, which I, uh, I purchased a, uh, a full set on Amazon, fronts and rears. Um, they're really cheap. Uh, I don't know what the quality are, like, I'm not going to be taking this bike down the racetrack anytime soon. Mostly just going to be for some weekend spirited riding, so I'm not too worried about high performance pads. If you're into that thing, you might want to look elsewhere, but if you do need pads, I'd appreciate it if you picked up the pads in the description. Uh, we recently set up an Amazon associate account, and uh, I don't have any sales yet, but you could be the first. <laughs> You're gonna buy the pads on Amazon anyways. If you click the link below, it kind of shoots you through a portal, and then we get a little bit of a kickback from the uh, from the sale, and then you end up with the same pads you were gonna order anyways. So it's kind of like a win-win thing. Um, yeah, well, now you just get your pads and your tools ready, and we'll get after it. All right, so I just discovered something on my own bike, actually. I, my left side uh, caliper, I don't have a back plate for my uh, pads, so I'll have to order one of those. All this time tinkering around, you think I would've saw it, but basically what you're gonna need to do first, um, like I was saying, my bike, because I took the front forks off, I've already got the calipers off, so you're gonna use your 12 millimeter uh, wrench and just take the two bolts out of here, one, two, I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes, but and then you're gonna wiggle the uh, wiggle the caliper off of the disc, and uh, you should bungee cord it. Um, for me, I'm just gonna kind of try to hold it here, okay? Then what you got is this back plate, and you should have a back plate. My bike, unfortunately, I'm missing it on the one, and this is a really small Allen. I think it's the three mil or two mil even. Itty bitty little guy. Try not to twist your hoses too much. I don't like what I'm doing here, but loosen your back plate right off. That'll get you access to the uh, slide pins. 
Don't lose nothing. It's all real small hardware for this stuff. Give that a cleaning. All right, so then you got access to the back. You're gonna have an Allen uh, or a uh, little cotter pin that holds the slide in. You may not be able to see it on camera, but it's there. So then you're gonna get the, uh, there it is, five millimeter. And brake torque on this little, uh, this little Allen that holds the slide in. They're pretty tight. Christ. There you go. Alright, pull that pin out of there. Set that to the side. And your pad should slide right out the back. So there's your pads out. Now what I would do is clean up your pen. This is just something that I do. A little bit of grease. Get your new pads ready, which I don't have. Yeah. You're just going to take your new pads, sandwich them together, slide them up through the back like that. Take your pen, slide it back through. It's kind of a three-man, three-hand job right here, but you, you'll get her. Maybe try putting your pen in the right way, that helps. All right, once you got your pin in, you rotate your tire a little bit too, doesn't, doesn't hurt. Once you got your pin in, don't forget to put your little cotter pin on the back side, okay? A lot of this stuff's pretty easy to forget. There you go, that's in. Now I gotta put my back plate on, I don't wanna forget that. She's looking pretty nasty. And that goes on just the same way it came off. These poor white fairings are just getting shattered. Tighten those up to like 10 foot pounds, I don't know, something like that. You want to do them kind of tight because it looks like whoever did the last set of brakes didn't do them up tight enough and it must have fell off down the highway or something, I don't know. It's missing. Alright, then you're just going to try to I will have to take my screwdriver, push it in there and just slowly try to push those calipers back. You can see them move there. It should give me enough room to get onto the disc. There we go. Take your 12 millimeter bolts. One. Two. All right, and you're just gonna head over to the other side and do the same thing. All right, so same idea here. I'm just going to uh, remove the two bolts off of the uh, fork here, wiggle my caliper off, remove my back plate, my protective back plate, which this side actually didn't have, which is awesome. You're going to uh, pull the cotter pin, <clears throat> pull the slide through. The, the, uh, the uh, pad should drop out. Put your new pads in. Uh, slide, lubricate your slide pin, put that back in, put your pin in, put your back plate on, and you should be able to slide these bad girls right on there.
mean, they're identical procedure for both sides, so you should be able to get it. There we go. I'm also probably going to end up bleeding the brakes on uh, on this uh, bike, just because I don't know how long that fluid's been in there. The front stuff looks pretty nasty. I don't know what the torque specs are for this, but uh, it's probably decent. I would say. I'll load it up on the uh, manual and I'll post it in the description, okay? I do go by, I'm planning on going by and retorquing all of these bolts anyways, like I don't have my axle bolt tight, super tight yet anyways. All right, that's the front stunt. Let's uh, get around to the backside. Off camera, I went ahead and uh, started playing around with this uh, rear caliper. Basically, you're going to have to remove the caliper off of the disc, just like on the front, but it's a little bit of a different system, like I was saying. There's a couple of extra clips, uh, keeper clips, and a little bit of a boot that goes underneath here. So I just took this off and I had a look underneath. This clip holds the pads in place. It's a similar to that cotter pin that's on the front, but you got to get this uh, caliper off, okay? And depending on if it's ever been off before, which mine hasn't. It is a pecker head. So what I've done is uh, I went ahead, I loosened these top two bolts here and uh, this one was really seized and I had to actually loosen this brake uh, cable just a little bit and push it down and tighten it up really quick before I got a spill. And then I was able to loosen these. So these are kind of loose right now. This one here actually attaches to the bottom of the swing arm. Um, it's a 14 millimeter. And I actually, here I'll take it off the stand here. I actually had to put, unfortunately this is the only thing that would fit in here with my stand, a 14 mil uh, socket there, and then I had to get a breaker bar, because this thing is damn near seized, I had to get a breaker bar through the rim with a long extension jammed into the ground, and then I got behind the rear tire with both and I just, and you hit it with a lot of penetrating oil. I mean this all depends if your brakes have ever been changed, like this bike's almost 20 years old and I guarantee you these have never been changed. So, yeah, I went ahead, I, uh, I broke the torque on that bolt there, and now I'll remove all three bolts and we'll lower that caliper down, and I'll show you guys what kind of rear brake system this bike has. All right, like I was saying, this back bolt was, the, was a complete pecker head. Try not to laugh, because you're gonna be back here just like me. <laughs> Oh. Okay, and now we'll get on to these two. Uh, these are still 12 mil on the front here. Now, like I was saying, I had to take my 12 mil here, just loosen this off a bit, push it down real quick, so that I could, uh, so that I could get at this bolt here. This one's a real tight squeeze. One. Now, like I said, I already, I thought maybe I could get at the uh, pads from underneath. You know, like uh, try to maybe open the shim up and, and put them up in, but you really do have to take this off. It's, it's just too tight down there. Can't work upside down. All right, so what I did is I kind of quickly pulled this out of the uh, bracket here and just leaving it off to the side like that. Shouldn't be too bad, it's not like a stupid heavy caliper or anything like that. It's not like a car, right? Like, you don't really have to bungee cord this stuff up unless it's for a long period of time. So now, definitely I gotta retract these calipers. So let me grab my little screwdriver. All right, well that's not too bad. I'll be able to get the pads out with that. Now it's gonna be really tough to see on camera. Let me see if I can zoom you in. Now when you remove the, when you remove this uh, pin here, hopefully you guys can see this, but basically there's a pin in here that hold, pins into these two uh, slide pins. So you're gonna remove that, and now we should be able to pull these slides out with a pair of needle nose.
These are rusted. Almost as bad as the fronts. Now there's a bunch of pins and stuff here, okay? So you don't want to lose these. Try and just pull these pads out with the pins on them, okay? And I'll show you what these are in a minute. We'll let that rest there. All right, so this stuff's not all in that bad shape. Let's go to the bench here and I'll show you how this back plating works. So I, I put one on the, uh, the new pad and I put one on the old pad so you can kind of see. But um, I mean, these pads are just junk. What's left of them, there's hardly any, hardly any pad left and I got this huge score, like a rock got stuck in there or something. But either way, they come with a back plate. The back plates really only go on one way. You'll see that when you pull yours off. Uh, this clip, the, we'll call it the long side, the big side will go on the inside with the pads, okay? You can see how rusty that is. So that's where that goes. On the, and, the, and the back pad obviously goes on this side. So here's how it should look on your new pad. Right? Now I'm going to clean all this up because it, it really should be fairly lubricated. But, um, you know, once you've got your stuff cleaned up, basically you're going to be sliding your pins through and then using your, your spring clip here to hold them in place. But we're going to have to do that on the actual caliper. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this stuff up. I'm going to uh, brush this down and uh, probably clean this back plate a little bit and then I'll install them. Went ahead and cleaned all my uh, back plates up. Put the wire brush to my springs a little bit. You know, you don't want one of those breaking or whatever from being too rusty. And uh, yeah, so now let's get back over to the caliper. I'll put a bit of grease kind of through here, through the pins, through the back plate, and uh, reinstall them. I think for this little bit here, I'm gonna bring my uh, little tiny screwdriver or something, because I, I know I'm gonna have issues trying to get this back in. You know, we're gonna have to install these pins and then with the other hand, try to push these uh, these uh, retaining clips down, which is going to be a pecker head. So I'll just get a small little flathead screwdriver as well. All right, so it's going to be kind of tough to do this one on camera because everything's so damn small. But what you got to do is get in here. If you haven't already uh, moved your caliper, your uh, pistons back. You have to get in here and just lightly. Lightly uh, squeeze those in, okay? That'll make it easier to get your pads in. Getting a smaller pair of vice grips don't hurt either. There we go. Lots of room now. So, I mean, you can see which way the uh, pin's got to go in, right? Okay, so, try not to twist your uh, brake cable too much, but you're going to have to rotate it around. You can see which way these pins go in. They only go in one way. And your clip's get your up. Uh, your clip is going to be on the inside, outside we'll call it. So they'll slide in like that. And then that special clip's going to go in, but you've got to get all this arranged. So let me try and do this. It takes two hands. Quite the position here. That's going to go down in there. Like I said, it ain't the prettiest shot, but It'll work. So we lower that down into there. We got our pin. Should grease it. The pin's gonna come in through this side with the hole out. You've gotta catch the back plate, go through the pad. And then you gotta push that keeper pin down. So I got my little screwdriver. I'm gonna try to. There we go, got one. Hopefully, you guys can see this. It's pretty much a one shot deal. And then I gotta push my pin down again. There we go. And then I gotta take my pin and I gotta get it through this, the hole of the second pad.
All right, that's one. I got really lucky there. <laughs> All right, now you gotta find your other pin. Here it is, put a bit of lube on her. Just a bit, you don't gotta go crazy. Push that in, it's gotta go through the back plate, through the pad, whoop, that was a bit too much. Then you gotta, this one's probably gonna be trickier because it's gonna be a bit more pressure, but push that pin down, push the pin through, and then same thing, I got my If you have if you have a helper of any sort, you'll be whoa. And don't lose that pin. You want or that little clip wants to come flying out of there. You don't want that. Okay, push that in. Just to hold this last pin down, it's a, quite the pecker head. Okay, there's that. Then you're gonna take your keeper uh, keeper pin, whatever the hell this thing's called. You may need to rotate your pin just so you can get your... This is where a bike lift is like key. All right, there it is. Just wiggle those both in there and it just gets caught in the middle and your pads are installed. I guess what you should be doing right now is putting this door back on. So this little thing here just has a hinge. There it is. Clip, clip. All right, so once you've got your uh, back under plating on nice and secure, make sure it is on there, because mine was actually kind of half-ass on, so I had to re uh, readjust it. You know, just get one bolt started. This bottom swing arm, uh, well, I guess it's the brake caliper holder thing, the jigger, it actually, uh, mine's a little bit loose so I can move it up and down. So I'm gonna uh, use that to my advantage and get these two bolts in. You know what, I'm buying a bike lift. I just am. That's her. There we go. I mean, this doesn't really mean nothing, but make sure you give your brakes a couple good pumps right before you get out on the road, get the pressure back up. Happy. All right, well, that's pretty much the end of the uh, brake job for the Suzuki. Uh, front brakes are a breeze, it's like they're just like every other bike. Unfortunately, the manufacturer wanted to give us a bit of trouble with the rear brakes, but you know, just got to uh, finesse it, make sure you, you remember how things came apart. You know, when you take your brake, your, your rear brakes apart, have a look at how those clips are set up and the pins, which way everything goes. If not, just watch the video, you know, maybe just take a picture of your brakes before you take it apart. Uh, you know, that works in a pinch. Um, yeah, so that's the brakes done. Like I said, I will do another video on bleeding the brakes. Um, I've got this uh, Phoenix Systems reverse brake bleeder. You basically pump new fluid through a pressure gun, through the caliper, up through the lines, and then through the reservoir. So uh, it basically eliminates all the air, and it's supposed to be like the cat's meow. So. Check that video out guys. If you own a uh, early series Gixxer, like a 750,000 or 600 from 2001 to 2003, uh, consider subscribing. This video series here, like we're just about halfway through it, I'd say. Um, I've basically tore the whole bike down, painted the fairing, sanded the fairings, got a video on that. De-rusted the tank. Um, I'm going through uh, spark plugs, air filters, oil changes all the fluids pretty much. It's been a really fun series so far and I'm, uh, I'm learning lots about the bike. And if you have any uh, tips for me actually, you can leave them down in the comments below. I'm always willing to uh, learn a new thing or two. 
And yeah, other than that, I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.